This is my four channel RFID controller for DeviceNet. In this case, I'm going to attach the device net directly to the controller using a device net T. I have the trunk in coming in on the left side, the trunk out going in on the right. If this happens to be the last node on the device net network, make sure the device net out connection gets replaced by a terminator. There should only be two terminators on the device net network. One at the last node on the trunk, and then one back at the beginning. Next thing we want to do is configure the device net parameters. We're going to set the address first, which is considered the MAC ID. Okay, so use the arrow keys to select the address and hit enter after you're done. Address 10 in this case. The next thing we want to do is configure the baud rate. Make sure the controller baud rate is equal to the device net baud rate. In my case, it's 500 kilobaud, so I'll enter that here. Okay, the last thing we need to configure is the device net assembly instance. This is going to determine how much data and how the data is going to be mapped in the device net network. From the manual, you're going to see this table, which is going to give you all of the different assembly instance options for mapping data on the device net network. I would suggest using the separated mode. This will give you the options for the easiest way to map data in the device net network. You can get as few as 8 bytes or as many as 60 bytes per RFID channel for all four channels. Because I want to map a lot of data, I'm going to map the largest one, which is this 107 to 157 assembly instance. It's going to allow me to map 60 bytes for each read head times a total of four read heads. This will give me, in device net, a mapping amount of 240 bytes in, 240 bytes out. Just make sure that you configure this in your device net configuration software. Once you've used the table to make your selection, enter it into the assembly instance option in the graphical display.